This is News 8 Now, this morning. They were ready to put aside the partisanship and put aside the extremism and to have an impartial court and a court that makes decisions based on the law, not on a political agenda. The agriculture industry is the one thing that affects every single American, regardless of any demographic. Rich, poor, Republican, Democrat, independent, we, we have to eat. And until we start lowering these energy costs, our food costs are gonna, are gonna remain high. The volunteer work that we do for recipients is kind of contained in their yards. It's that idea of getting their yards ready for spring. So it's those basic things that we all kind of get out and do as soon as the sun starts shining. Good morning, everyone. That was your morning eye opener. I'm Sophia Pullman. And I'm Derek Sibley. It is Wednesday, Mar April. April. <laughs> April Don't go 5th. back to March, please don't. <laughs> Fifth is it? Yeah, yeah, it's already the fifth. Mm -hmm. Sure is. Wow, it's going to fly by just like March. Yeah, I mean, seriously, it's already cruising on by and, uh, you know, we're no almost... No snow to, yet? No, no, no snow in the forecast, Knock really. on wood. Yeah, I think we're pretty <laughs> much done with that stuff, at least for the time being. Um, we had some thunderstorms, though, rolling yes. yesterday. I know, if you see bags under my eyes, <laughs> it was because those storms kept me up and I, I live alone, so I didn't know... Funny story about that, she actually <laughs> texted me last night, Derek, am I going to have to worry about some tornadoes or severe <laughs> weather? I said, make sure you have that first worn weather app on I know. your phone. I gotta get <laughs> You'll it. You'll be okay. Uh, but hey, you know, everything is uh, improving here across the Cooley region. We are just left over with some cloud cover in the wake of those showers and thunderstorms as they continue to move out of here uh, this morning. But as you were sleeping last night, here's a look at what happened. You can see all those showers and storms move through uh, during the evening and they quickly rolled out of here as they were in a hurry uh, to move towards the east and northeast. Now on the back side, we're going to be looking at some cooling conditions a little bit, but you can see some warm spots pretty sheen at 56, 43 in La Crosse and temperatures in Eau Claire currently at 37 degrees. So here's what you can expect uh, for today. We're going to start off pretty cloudy this morning through at least 10 o'clock. Then we start to see some partial clearing at noon. The winds are going to pick up though as we head into the afternoon hours here today. In fact, we could be looking at sustained winds coming out of the west at around 20 miles an hour or even higher than that. And occasional gusts up to 40 are also possible. So I'll time things out. I'll show you those wind gusts coming up in the full weather forecast a little bit later. Sophia. Thanks, Derek. Let's get to some news this morning. Let's begin with Tuesday election results for the open seat on the Wisconsin State Supreme Court. Milwaukee County Circuit Judge Janet Protozawitz has defeated former Justice Dan Kelly for the Wisconsin Supreme Court seat. Protozawitz has won the race 55% to 44% in her favor, according to the New York Times. This win flips the Wisconsin Supreme Court from a conservative majority to a liberal majority. Protozawitz celebrated her victory with supporters in Milwaukee. They were ready to put aside the partisanship and put aside the extremism and to have an impartial court and a court that makes decisions based on the law, not on a political agenda. This is the first time the court's majority has flipped since 2008. Opponent Dan Kelly took to the podium in Green Lake and told supporters he accepts his loss, but believes Protozawitz's win was not clean, calling her a liar. I do not have a worthy opponent to which I can concede. This was the most deeply deceitful, dishonorable, despicable campaign I have ever seen run for the courts. Kelly also thanks supporters for their time. UW lacrosse professor Anthony Chergoski says Protozawitz's win is a sign of what's to come for Wisconsin politics. The future of Wisconsin's abortion ban is very much in doubt because of the win of Protozawitz. And the future of the legislative maps is very much in doubt because of the Protozawitz win. Democrat-backed Protozawitz heavily emphasized her pro-choice position as she campaigned. There are also constitutional amendments on the ballot. Once approved, become law. The first asks voters if courts should be allowed to consider the likelihood that a defendant would cause serious harm if they're released into the community. This amendment would change the existing phrase of serious bodily harm to just serious harm. Serious harm is not currently defined by state law. 
The second asks if a judge should be allowed to consider a person's past convictions and other factors when setting bail. If both of these referenda are approved, it will change Wisconsin's constitution. The governor cannot veto the change. La Crosse's Common Council had six seats up for grabs for incumbents running unopposed, but two races for districts one and two. In district one, Tamara Dickinson is going to succeed Andrea Richmond, the longest serving councilwoman in La Crosse history to represent the city's northwest side. Dickinson is a retired nurse and secretary for the Logan North Side Neighborhood Association. And Aaron Goggin has defeated Michael Davis for District 2's council seat that was formerly Scott Neumeister's. The district covers areas of the city's north side. Goggin has been the executive director for the Harry J. Olson Center. Locally, one of the biggest races on the ballot is the La Crosse School Board race. Eight candidates for four open spots. This is the first time in over 31 years that four seats were open at one time. La Crosse voters have chosen who will fill that. Deb, Deb Shula, Scott Newmeister, Trevor Spargage, and Jeff Jackson. Sukla served on the school board from 2001 to 2008. New Meister served on La Crosse's Common Council, but stepped down to run for the school board. Both Spraga and Jackson have three kids who attend La Crosse schools. In interviews with News 8, all of the candidates spoke about incorporating all communities and voices on the board, while New Meister and Sukla did not support the referendum. Spraga did. Jackson believes the board needs to communicate why certain proposals are made. The new board members will be sworn in on April 24th. The La Crosse School District also put an operational referendum on the ballot, which has passed. This will extend a 2018 referendum for $60 million over six years to cover operational and maintenance costs, plus staff retention, student support services, and security improvements. Property taxes will go up $30 a year per $100,000 of property value. Other school area school districts went to referendum, including a capital referendum for the Norwalk, Ontario, Wilton School District, which asked voters to approve nearly $25 million to renovate school buildings, buy new class equipment, plus put in a new gym and track and football area. With 100% reporting, the yeses have 69%. This amounts to a $30 a year property tax increase per 100000 of value. The rest are operational referenda. The Arcadia School District went to referendum for the first time in 30 years, and its $750,000 three-year referendum passes to pay staff salaries, maintain facilities, and update the bus fleet. The district has been paying off other debt early, so this referendum isn't raising property taxes. Toma School District voters approve a $2.5 million referendum over the next four academic years to maintain programs, operational costs, and school safety. The superintendent tells us there's going to be virtually no tax impact on voters. Whitehall School District's $750,000 two-year referendum passes to maintain operations. The tax impact next school year per $100,000 of home value is $60, but that drops to $17 the second year. Over to Westby School District now, that three-year referendum includes a $1.9 million increase for three years, the first coming in the 2024-2025 school year. That money goes to operational costs and to keep up educational programs with an annual tax impact of $9 per $100,000 of property value. A quick reminder that our list of races and referenda in tonight's in this morning's newscast is not exhaustive. One other school referendum we have is Blair Taylor approving a $1.5 million per year referendum for the next three academic years for operations and facilities. That tax impact per $100,000 of value is 108 bucks a year. Let's turn now to the region's only public safety Referendum: The village of West Salem has voted yes to a $500,000 reoccurring referendum to hire three more police officers, including a dedicated investigator. West Salem's chief, Kyle Hawson, told us the department doesn't have enough staff to provide 24-7 village coverage. The money will go to new officer salaries, training, and equipment.
There were also multiple advisory referendums on ballots yesterday, one statewide and others local. In the statewide election, asking voters if they believe able-bodied, childless adults should be required to look for work when getting benefits. Voters said they do believe people should have to look for work. Wisconsinites getting state benefits are already required to look for work. The outcome of this referendum won't change any laws. Locally, three counties in our area put a referendum related to the statewide abortion ban. In La Crosse County, a majority of voters said they believe the law should be repealed. And just to our north in Eau Claire, a majority of voters also decided the law should be appealed. In Vernon County, the results were slightly tighter, but a majority of voters believe the ban should be repealed as well. These referendums are advisory and will have no effect on current laws. Still ahead on your morning news, why more women are hitting the farm fields in Wisconsin and Minnesota, we'll explain. And we'll announce more winners from Best of La Crosse County contests, that and more coming up this morning. For now, we're sending you to break with something to put the good in your morning. For the fourth year in a row, Easter time at Peddler's Village in Pennsylvania means a total takeover by the popular peeps marshmallowy Easter time treats. Inside the visitor and event center, guests will find more than 130 marshmallow masterpieces currently on display. Anyone can submit pieces of work. The only rule is every piece must be made with and inspired by peeps. Don't go anywhere. Your consumer news at News 8 Now this morning after the break. Well, it sure is a pretty cloudy start here this morning in the wake of all those showers and thunderstorms that moved through here yesterday. Now for the dog walking conditions this morning, things will continue to remain on the cloudy side here for you, followed by some partly cloudy conditions as we head into the afternoon hours here today. Mostly cloudy and windy, especially as we head into the evening hours here too. Let's talk about your zone forecast today in La Crosse County. High temperatures are going to rise into the mid to upper 40s. I expect 48 in West Salem today, 45 in Holman. 56 down south in Lansing today. Going to be at 53 in Viroqua, however. 43 and windy today. Arcadia, 49 in Sparta today. And as we head north into the Chippewa Valley, very windy here too, with highs mainly into the low 40s. Eau Claire looking at a high of 43 degrees. So for your bus stop forecast this morning, 44 and cloudy is what we can expect to start. And as we head back home from school this afternoon, we're going to be looking at 41 degrees, partly cloudy skies, and a little bit windy out there here as well. Now, coming up in just a bit, I'll talk about what we can expect as far as the timing goes with some of these wind gusts today. And I'll also let you know how much of a wind chill effect that this could cause, especially as we head into tonight, coming up in just a few minutes. In your morning consumer news this morning, General Motors is telling investors that about 5,000 employees of its have taken buyouts. The automaker will take about a $1 billion charge, but the downsizing will save the company about $1 billion yearly. The buyouts were voluntary and all U.S. salaried staff with at least five years at the company. GM says while it was voluntary, employees were encouraged to take advantage of the offer. If you're planning a summer vacation, don't forget to take a buddy. Southwest Airlines is bringing back its companion pass that allows travelers to designate one person to fly with them for free. To qualify, you must be a member of Southwest's frequent flyer program and register for the promotion. The buddy pass will work on as many flights as you want between August 15th and September 30th. Slow demand for electric vehicles is driving down the price of lithium battery prices for lithium are reportedly down more than 30% this year. The drop takes prices back to supporting levels after a rise. Prices for other metals that go into batteries such as cobalt and nickel are also sliding. The situation is creating markets that are making traders cautious. Electric vehicles accounted for 10% of U.S. vehicle sales in December. If Mother Nature cooperates, spring planting will be right around the corner and more women than ever before will be working in the farm fields of Minnesota and western Wisconsin. John Lorston talked with farmers about why that's happening and why the trend will likely continue. Uh, we have 66 as a full barn. At Gatewood Farm near Wilmer, Christy Gatewood is working full time 
while she also works full time at another job in town. She's early to rise each day, making sure the dairy cows are milked and the other animals are taken care of. We have the horse and the donkey, uh, peacocks, chickens for eggs. Christy grew up raising hogs and growing corn and soybeans. A few years ago, she married into her husband's dairy operation. And as she's become one of the main operators here, she's joined a lead company. According to an agriculture census, there are now nearly 20,000 farms in the state where a woman is the primary operator. That equates to about one third of all farms in the state, numbers that continue to grow. I am proud to say I'm the fourth generation. A few miles away from Gatewood Farm is Fixin Farms. That's where you'll find Sarah Lushick. She left corporate America a decade ago to take over her family's century-old farmstead. Early on, we raised hemp, potatoes, I mean, lots of different. I mean, it was just a completely different farm way back in the history. But today, strictly corn and soybeans. And as she gets ready for spring planting, she credits technology for giving her and other women opportunities like this. As a precision farmer, she uses software to map out when and where she wants to plant. When that seed hits the ground, if we don't do it right, if we don't place it right, we can't fix it. With technology, it has allowed others to enter into agriculture as well. No matter how this year's crop turns out, both Sarah and Christy are sure of one thing. They want to inspire the next generation of women in agriculture. There's so many avenues now to agriculture. You know, it used to be just on the farm. Well, now there's so much more. The farm is always busy. It is nice to be able to be your own boss. The USDA agriculture census estimates that women are also the primary decision makers on nearly 60% of farms and ranches in Minnesota. That's it for your morning consumer news. Let's check in with Derek and today's forecast. All right, thanks so much for that, Sophia. It sure is a bit of a cloudy start here this morning across much of the area. As you can see from City Cam 8, we are off to a quiet start, however. 43 degrees and cloudy skies is what the current conditions are standing right now in, o in uh, La Crosse and in Eau Claire. We are looking at 37 degrees with cloudy skies. It does feel a little cooler than that at 32 thanks to the northeast breeze at around six miles an hour. Plenty of cloud cover here across the area. Look at all the thunderstorms that moved through here yesterday and overnight as you were sleeping. They are finally starting to exit the area now thanks to this low pressure system that is exiting our area here as well. And you can see the frontier associated with the system too with some of those showers and storms lined up along that front as it continues to move towards the east. Plenty of snow here on the north side of this low pressure system as well. So what's going to happen is we're going to be on the back side of the system here today. That is going to help tighten up the pressure gradient pretty good and also allow us to see some pretty windy conditions on the back side here as we head to the uh, later afternoon to early evening hours under partly to mostly cloudy weather conditions here today. So let's talk about some of these wind gusts that we could see anywhere between around 35 to 40 miles an hour as possible. As a matter of fact, that's more so towards the afternoon going into around the two o'clock hour there as you can see. And then by 7 p.m. this evening still looking quite gusty. Uh, gusty conditions up to 30 miles now are possible. Now overnight tonight, the wind gusts won't be necessarily as strong, but we could see gusts up to 20 to 25 miles an hour still in place for those wind speeds begin to subside just a bit as we head into tomorrow morning, but still a little bit breezy here tomorrow because gusts up to you know 20 plus miles an hour are still possible in some spots. And then I do expect by tomorrow evening things should come to a close as far as some of those gusty conditions. Now this is also going to affect our wind chills here because the stronger the winds, uh, the cooler the wind chills will be. And you can see by two o'clock our feel like temperatures will be into the low 30s, followed by wind chill factors here into the teens and low 20s as we head into overnight tonight. Because remember, we won't have the sunshine and we're going to have some of those gusty conditions, so we'll definitely cool down the temperatures. And then by 6 p.m. tomorrow, we're going to be warming up here. In fact, our wind chills will be pretty close to our actual temperatures as those wind speeds begin to subside here as we head into later tomorrow afternoon and also into early tomorrow evening. So on the eight day forecast, Windy today, breezy tomorrow. We're expecting highs to warm up into the mid 50s on Friday, followed by the 60s on uh, Saturday and also into Sunday. Now we're not done warming up yet because as you can see, as we head into next week, 
Hey, we may even look at the uh, 70s for our high temperatures starting on Monday. That'll be the first time this year that we hit the 70s, so that's something to definitely look forward to. Even a high of 77 is possible on Tuesday. We'll keep tabs on that. Stay with us, though. We're back with uh, much more news and weather still to come on News 8 now this morning. We're sending it a break with a look what happened on this day in history for April 5th. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Morning Blitz. A rainy day canceled most of the high school games yesterday, but in Milwaukee, they were nice and dry under the roof of American Family Field. We'll skip to the sixth inning, and Rowdy Tellez is going to turn this lead from two to three, a solo shot to right field. And that must have been the spark the offense needed because next batter, Brian Anderson at the plate, and Anderson joins in on the home run fun. This one's to left center field. His solo blast is his third RBI of the night. Give him the cheese head, he's feeling it. Oh, but they weren't done. The rookie Garrett Mitchell now up. And don't tell me Mitchell's gonna go back to back to back, all off of Max Scherzer. And the rookies continue to play a big role. I wish I had more time because later in the game, Anderson and Mitchell would actually go back to back again. Brewers win nine to zero. They're four and one on the year. They're going for the sweep tomorrow evening. Twins yet to lose a game this year. They're down in Miami against the Marlins second inning and this was about the only mistake that Kente Maeda made over the play and Avi Garcia makes him pay a solo shot to right field. It's 1-0 Miami but other than that Maeda was solid. The 2021 Cy Young runner up struck out nine and five full innings. A very solid outing from him but on the other side was last year's NL Cy Young winner Sandy Alcantara and he was dealing. Here he is in the ninth Gets Trevor Larnark to ground into the double play, and that's the ball game. Both these teams with just three hits apiece. The game finished in under two hours as both pitching staffs dominated. Twins fall to four and one on the year. They'll have Pablo Lopez on the mound tomorrow. And big news out of Madison yesterday, Wisconsin senior Tyler Wall announced that he's using his extra year of eligibility to come back and play for the Badgers one last time. The Lakeville, Minnesota native started 85 career games for Wisconsin, and with his return, the Badgers will be returning all five of their starters and will look to capitalize on a deep NIT run. In Wall's post on social media, he said, quote, I have always wanted to leave the Wisconsin jersey better than I found it, and our team has accomplished a lot over the last few years, but we're not finished, unquote. Wall was battling an ankle injury in the second half of last season and will return to the team much more healthy. That'll do it for the Blitz. We'll see you tonight. Melting snow is feeding rivers and triggering the first flood warning of the year in Minnesota. Parts of the state are already seeing some standing water. Kristen Mitchell reports on how spring flood could affect the state. The team is saying that we will ask for a halt on this consent degree until community members actually get a chance to get their full input into it. The Minnesota Department of Human Rights probe into past practices of Minneapolis police prove the department engaged in racial bias policing. This agreement signed Friday presents a path forward in transforming the department. The settlement agreement states the city and Minneapolis Police Department did not and do not admit or agree with the Minnesota Department of Human Rights findings. That is neither transparency, it's not accountability, nor the consequences that this community demands. Members of the Unity Community Mediation Team call the agreement totally inadequate. Because the police within that document on the release of claims gets to ensure that their wrongdoings that they've done to us, that they've done to the community, they don't have to admit to that fault. They're referring to the release of claims statement and the agreement, one the city attorney says, is standard. The legal agreement, uh, again, we don't have to admit to all findings. Um, and, and in fact, it's a typical term of a settlement agreement that, um, that there is not an admission of liability. I ask our community to ask those very questions. Go and look at the release of claims. Look at what they are asking us to give up as community members who suffered this abuse and who suffered this pain. For now, more questions than answers. And until they have what they need, they want the implementation of this agreement put on hold. This settlement agreement slams the door 
in the face of our communities for true justice, and our communities will not allow avenues of true justice to be taken away. Melting snow is feeding rivers and triggering the first flood warning of the year in Minnesota. Parts of the state are already seeing some standing water. Kristen Michelle reports on how spring floods could affect the state. It's really pretty. It's the talk of the town. There's the one over there. <laughs> in Northfield. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Andy Siebenaller. Seeing a huge log sitting in it is a little unusual. It is a huge tree log. Look at it. <laughs> and Amy Gertesmeyer received the flood warning. That's going to overflow soon, I think. And came to the Cannon River to see for themselves. I can feel the mist. The last snowstorm we had melted so fast, so. And then I drove past the other day and it was crazy. It was so high. I love it. The Cannon River at Northfield is expected to crest sometime Wednesday afternoon at minor flood stage. But as you can see, the water has already started to rise, starting to flood parts of East River Trail. The soccer field at Carleton College is also becoming one with the river. The river walk is kind of a spillway to our back door. And so we're the first place flooded in Rice County every year. Since a devastating flood in 2010, David Vistendahl made big changes to his properties along the river. We had to reinvest in the building, figure out how to make it more river resistant. He's moved his AC unit, raised wires, and installed flood panels. There's two removable steel panels, they weigh about 150 pounds each, that are bolted on. Hoping this year, that orange danger sign out there is my marker. They won't be needed. As always, we feel apprehensive because it, it can turn on just one good rainstorm. Like obviously the water's high and I hope everyone stays safe, but I, I'm looking forward to the warmer weather. Northfield isn't alone. The National Weather Service's River City south of St. Paul could be in a flood of trouble soon. Wisconsin 3rd Congressional District Representative Derek Van Orden paid a visit to a farm in La Crosse to talk about a new energy bill. On Tuesday, the congressman toured Wisconsin farms to discuss the Lower Energy Costs Act. The bill seeks to reverse the Biden administration's climate plan in the inflow. Inflation Reduction Act. Van Orden says the bill he supports will work to restore American energy independence and that the switch is necessary. The agriculture industry is the one thing that affects every single American, regardless of any demographic. Rich, poor, Republican, Democrat, independent, we, we have to eat. And until we start lowering these energy costs, our food costs are going to remain high, and it's unacceptable. Van Orden has also co-sponsored the DARE Act, which works to stop foreign rivals such as China from purchasing American farmland. Senator Tammy Baldwin told News 8 now the amount of land being bought up by those foreign countries has Congress concerned. This morning, we are announcing more winners for the Best of La Crosse County Contest, an annual event where the people of the community vote their favorite spots in certain categories. There's some established names and some hidden gems. Let's take a look. Looking to chow down on a burger, Milwaukee Burger Company in La Crosse took home the award for Best Burger in the County, followed by Red Pines Bar and Grill in second and Blue Moon Restaurant in third. Voted the best butcher shop in La Crosse County this year was Holman Locker and Meat Market. Shuby's Neighborhood Butcher took second and Bubba's placed third. The best chain restaurant went to Culver's this year, followed by Texas Roadhouse and Chick-fil-A soared into third place. The best place to get a plate of wings is in the county went to the Sports Nut. Howie's on La Crosse received second place and Old Faithful Buffalo Wing Wild Wings took home third. The best dining experience as voted by you was the Waterfront Restaurant and Tavern. Love Child received second place and Red Pines Bar and Grill came in third. There's more categories for the best of La Crosse and here at News 8 Now we will share those throughout the week. Well, it sure is a pretty cloudy start here this morning in the wake of those showers and thunderstorms that moved through yesterday and also last night. And they did produce some heavy downpours, some a little bit of hail 
and also frequent lightning strikes at the same time. For today, I'm not expecting any more of that, but it will be pretty cloudy though. 44 degrees and also very windy today. West southwesterly winds at around 20 to 30 miles an hour. Gusts up to 40 miles an hour are also possible at times. For tonight, still a little bit breezy, 26 degrees, and it will be a little on the chilly side here as well, thanks to those winds at around 15 to 25 miles an hour. Your zone forecast today calls for highs into the 40s and 50s in La Crosse County today. We're looking at 50, as a matter of fact, in West Salem, 55 in Lansing, 52 in Linksville, 50 today in Westby. Highs will reach the mid 40s with windy conditions expected today across our central zones. Our north zones will be into the upper 30s to low 40s with some breezy weather conditions as well. So for your drive cast this morning, things continue to remain cloudy, partly cloudy and a bit windy here for your lunch hour and also we're looking at some partly to mostly cloudy conditions for the evening and still a bit windy. We'll talk more about that in the full weather forecast after the break and also coming up in our buzz report. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, sir, it's a pretty cloudy start here this morning in the wake of those showers and thunderstorms that roll through here yesterday across the area. Temperatures in La Crosse now are currently at 43 degrees, but at least our visibility, though, looking good at 10 miles for your morning commute. And speaking of that here in Eau Claire, we are looking at 37 degrees, but our visibility down to three miles, however. So you may run to possibly a little bit of some mist here or some fog here. It looks like in some of those spots, northeast winds light at around three miles an hour. So over the last 12 hours, we were tracking showers and storms that rolled through here yesterday. And in fact, while you were sleeping, there were some leftover showers and storms that rolled through here as well. They dumped some heavy downpours, a little bit of hail, and also some frequent lightning strikes here associated with that as well. And that was, that was all thanks to this low pressure system that continues to affect our weather because even though it's departing the area today, we're going to be on the backside of the system. So that means we're going to be expecting some gusty winds here to take shape here today, all under those partly cloudy conditions. And as you can see, it will be a little bit windy here this afternoon, 40 degrees being the temperature at 4 o'clock. And then by 8 o'clock this evening, we will be talking about partly cloudy skies, temperatures at around 35 degrees. So right now we are looking OK for as far as our wind gusts, but those gusts are expected to pick up anywhere between around 30 to 40 miles an hour as we head into the afternoon. The winds potentially won't be as strong as we head into this evening, but they can still be quite gusty at times up to 30 miles an hour. And then by overnight tonight, we are talking about the wind speeds even uh, settling down just a little bit further here, but still quite gusty here at times. By 10 o'clock tomorrow, still slightly gusty up to 20, 20 to 25 miles per hour here at times. And then by 3 o'clock, anywhere between 20 to 30 mile per hour wind gusts are still possible before they really begin to subside as we head into tomorrow evening as that low pressure system begins to pull away. So as of right now, wind chills are pretty close to our actual air temperatures, but they're going to feel like the low 30s though into the afternoon today thanks to those gusty conditions and wind chill factors will make temperatures feel like they're in the teens and low 20s by overnight tonight and also into early tomorrow morning. Now by tomorrow afternoon, once those wind gusts begin to subside around 6 p.m., I do expect that the uh, wind chills will be pretty close close to our actual air temperatures, so you won't really feel much of a difference there once those wind speeds begin to subside. And as that low begins to pull away, you can see that pressure gradient begins to weaken here a bit. That's why the wind speeds will begin to relax. High pressure from the west is going to move in here as we head into tomorrow, and that is going to give us some quieter conditions to work with as well. And at the same time, the system is going to hang around here as we head into this weekend, and also we'll get more of a southeasterly wind component here, so that should warm up our temperatures even further. And as a matter of fact, you'll see that here on the eight day forecast that this weekend temperatures as far as our highs go warm up into the 60s and we're not done warming up yet because as we head into next week, we're going to start off into the 70s here potentially. Meanwhile, low temperatures will continue into the 20s over the next couple of days. Those lows will also warm up into the 30s as we head into Saturday followed by low temperatures warming up into the 40s as we head into Sunday and also into next week. In our morning buzz report, actor Hugh Jackman says he may have skin cancer again, and he urges everyone to protect themselves in the sun. In a video posted on his Instagram account, Jackman says he is waiting for test results. The 54 year old has been treated for skin cancer several times. In the new video, Jackman said his skin was damaged 25 years ago and is just coming out now. 
He also urged everyone to wear sunscreen to help protect themselves from getting skin cancer. Meghan Markle is being recognized for her work advocating for women. Markle will receive the Women of Vision Award, an honor previously presented to Hillary Clinton. Gloria Steinman, an activist and founder of the Miss Foundation for Women, will present the award at the Foundation's 50th Anniversary Gala in New York next month. Prince Harry and Markle founded Archwell in 2020, which has provided support and grants to several charities supporting women and girls. Miles, being Spider-Man is a sacrifice. You have a choice between saving one person and saving every world. Here's the latest look at Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. Miles Morales. Spider-Man is back after returning with other spider people from the Oscar winning Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Acros, the Spider-Verse swings into theaters June 2nd. So I'm an original Spider-Man fan. Yeah. I don't like I I don't understand why they keep like making original, new ones. Original as in the um with the Tobey Maguire that one or Yes. Yeah, okay. There's so many Spider-Mans that I forget. I know. You know. So but but I mean like yeah, I I do like the the old ones better. The too. like just yeah. the first I think he was in the first three or two Spider-Mans. Yeah, yeah. Those are the ones I like. Yeah, there was three of them with him, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Derek. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> Before we had to break, it's time to look at today's Look Who's Eight. Happy eight months to Channing. Channing is a happy baby who is always on the move. Happy 80th birthday to Marilyn. Marilyn enjoys reading, playing cards, and making crafts. Happy 88th birthday to Shirley. Shirley's family wants to wish her a very happy birthday today. If you know a special someone turning 8 months, 8 years, 18, 80, or 88 years old soon, we'd love to feature them. Just upload their photos to our website, news8000.com, and look for the Submit Pictures button under the Home tab on our website. Stay with us. We have everything you need to know today in 5 minutes or less. Your morning news now is up next. All the best mattresses are under one roof at PM Sleep Center. Tempur-Pedic, Beautyrest Black, Stearns & Foster, Sealy Posturepedic, and Serta Eye Comfort. Your best night's sleep starts at PM Sleep Center, giving La Crosse a good night's sleep for over 30 years. Better windows now. Attractive, easy to operate, and energy efficient for convenience, comfort, quiet, and savings. All styles made to fit your home. Wood grain interior, hardwood interior, solid colors, painted exteriors, highest rated double and triple glazing, and decorative glass. Installation by factory trained installers, and now the lowest price of the year during the 20th annual Early Bird Home Show, only at the board store. 524 Copeland Avenue, La Crosse. <laughs> Russell, what does this have to do with law? Absolutely nothing. Papa Murphy's presents How to Change the Way You Pizza. Step one, grab a delicious Papa Murphy's pizza. Step two, bake. Step three, chow down on the deliciousness. Right now, get the chicken garlic pizza for just $11.99 at papamurphys.com. All the best mattresses are under one roof at PM Sleep Center. Tempur-Pedic, Beautyrest Black, Stearns & Foster, Sealy Posturepedic, and Serta Eye Comfort. Your best night's sleep starts at PM Sleep Center, giving La Crosse a good night's sleep for over 30 years. We all know how weather goes around here. So why not take the first WARN team with you? Stay weather aware with hourly temps and conditions, video forecasts, and interactive radar. And the best part? It's easy to use. Here, try it. In your morning news now, the election results for the open seat on the Wisconsin State Supreme Court. Milwaukee County Circuit Judge Janet Protozawitz has defeated former Justice Dan Kelly for the Wisconsin Supreme Court seat. Protozawitz has won the race 55% to 44% in her favor, according to the New York Times. This win flips the Wisconsin Supreme Court from a conservative majority to a liberal majority. Protozawitz celebrated her victory with supporters in Milwaukee. They were ready to put aside the partisanship and put aside the extremism and to have an impartial court and a court that makes decisions based on the law 
not on a political agenda. This is the first time the court's majority has flipped since 2008. Opponent Dan Kelly took to the podium in Green Lake and told supporters he accepts his loss. Kelly also thanks supporters for their time. The future of Wisconsin's abortion ban is very much in doubt because of the win of protosewets. And there are also constitutional amendments on the ballot. Once approved, become law. The first asks voters if courts should be allowed to consider the likelihood that a defendant would cause serious harm if they're released into the community. This amendment would change the existing phrase of serious bodily harm to just serious harm. Serious harm is not currently defined by the state law. The second asks if a judge should be allowed to consider a person's past convictions and other factors when setting bail. If both of these referenda are approved, it will change Wisconsin's constitution. The governor cannot veto the change. The La Crosse School District also put an operational referendum on the ballot, which has passed. This will extend a 2018 referendum for $60 million over six years to cover operational and maintenance costs, plus staff retention, student support services, and security improvements. Property taxes will go up $30 a year per $100,000 of property value. Other school area school districts went to referendum, including a capital referendum for the Norwalk, Ontario, Wilton School District, which asked voters to approve nearly $25 million to renovate school buildings, buy new class equipment, plus put in a new gym and track and football area. With 100% reporting, the yeses have 69%. This amount to a $30 a year property tax increase per $100,000 of value. The rest are operational referenda. The Arcadia School District went to referendum for the first time in 30 years. And its $750,000 three-year referendum passes to pay staff salaries, maintain facilities, and update the bus fleet. The district has been paying off other debt early, so this referendum isn't raising property taxes. Thomas School District voters approve a $2.5 million referendum over the next four academic years to maintain programs, operational costs, and school safety. The superintendent tells us there's going to be virtually no tax impact on voters. Whitehall School District's $750,000 two-year referendum passes to maintain operations. The tax impact next school year Per $100,000 of home value is $60, but that drops to $17 the second year. Over to Westby School District now, that three-year referendum includes a $1.9 million increase for three years, the first coming in the 2024-2025 school year. That money goes to operational costs and to keep up educational programs with an annual tax impact of $9 per $100,000 of property value. And as you head out the door this morning, temperatures are in the 40s under cloudy skies. We'll be talking about partly cloudy skies, though, as we head into the early afternoon hours. But at the same time, that is when those winds will be picking up, sustained just over 20 miles an hour here at times out of the west uh, during the afternoon with gusts up to 40 miles an hour also possible, making it very windy here today. Breezy conditions will last into the day tomorrow with a high of 49 degrees, 50s for Friday, 60s this weekend. High temperatures warming up into the 70s, though, it looks like as we head into next week. That will mark the first time this year. Thanks, Derek. Yeah.